what's going on everyone so today i'm going to show you how to make this incredible yet simple website design using wordpress and don't worry you don't have to know a single line of code and i'm going to show you exactly how i did it step by step and it's completely perfect for beginners experts or just anyone who wants to make their own website so let's go through and look at the actual design so starting off we have this little illustration on the right side couple descriptions here and then a call to action button and if I scroll down here, we have numbers that auto generate as I scroll. Cool little cloud effects here. And then we got down here the services option. And this is just one of the features. So if I bring the mouse over, it hovers and showcases a blue outline. And then if I keep scrolling down below, we'll have another section. What our clients say about us. And then some cool effects here. Little curve action going on. And then down we have an about section here with another illustration. And keep going, we have the bottom, the contact section. And what's cool about this website is if I were to go back up, I click learn more, scrolls right down in the services, tells you exactly what they do. Also, if I wanna go up here, click on the about us on the menu section, you can see right away, it goes directly to that section there. And then the last one is the contact us. And the same thing does it back here at the bottom of the footer, click about us, brings it back up as well. And then pretty much, the home would we'll go back to the home section there. But one other thing, aside from having a front static page where everything's on the first section, I can also show you how to add a page where it goes onto a different tab. So this is why I have this menu up here called new. So I click on this, scroll down, and this is a custom page in itself where you can pretty much add whatever feature you want, change the background, add videos, text, credentials, testimonials, literally whatever you want to do all within WordPress and using a certain plugin, which I'll showcase throughout this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get into the actual course. So let's get started. So the very first thing you're going to need is web hosting. And the one that I highly recommend is SiteGround. And I've used multiple hosting companies in the past. And let me tell you, SiteGround by far is the fastest in terms of page loading speed for your websites so once i got onto it i have not left them since so definitely recommend them and if you want to get access to siteground and get on the same page as me i'll include a link down below in the description so simply click on that link and it'll lead you to this web page and just note that is my affiliate link so if you do decide to go through there i'll receive a small commission if you make any sort of purchases now once we're on this web page, let's go ahead and scroll down. Now they have multiple different options, but the one for this tutorial is going to be the reliable web hosting. So go ahead and click on get started. All right, so now we go down here. Now you have three options currently. So the first option is pretty much the most basic one they have and only allows you to have one website. The second option is the grow big one. And this is the most popular and the main benefit is you pretty much have infinite websites that you can make and it's only a couple of dollars more than the startup plan. And then last but not least, they have the uh, Go Geek, which is the most expensive. But most likely, if you're not into this uh, features right here, you don't need this. Most people go with the middle plan. And sometimes if you only have one website, go with the startup plan. So just note this is the one I mainly use, but for the example purpose for today, I'm just going to go with the startup plan for this tutorial because it is the cheapest. And if you are on a budget, then obviously this would make most sense. So I'm going to go ahead and click on get plan. All right, so here is when you go ahead and enter a domain. So if you already have a domain, you'd simply just check I already have a domain. But for this sake, I'm just going to register one and I'm just going to go ahead and make up some random website name. Let's go with website to tutorial and let's see if this is taken or not so let's go ahead and click on proceed so awesome looks like it is available so now just simply fill out this information email password go down below fill out your address and then go down payment information and then here let me let me showcase this really quickly so pretty much the time period is 12 months and ideally they have 24 and 36 so if you did want to keep a cheaper rate you could increase it but for this sake i'm gonna go with the 12 months they have a trial but it's just not worth the price since it's pretty much similar pricing for much much more months and then here on the bottom section you have two other options you have the domain privacy 
and then you have the SG site scanner. So pretty much what this means for domain privacy is if you do not want your information that you're going to use to fill out this public, then I would highly recommend you check this checkbox. I always do this, but for this tutorial sake, I'm not going to do it just because of the cost. But basically, if you don't check this, you're going to expect to get a bunch of people calling your phone number randomly. So that's why I recommend everyone to actually do domain privacy so that you don't get a bunch of spammers calling your number every single second. And then pretty much once you fill out all this information, go ahead and confirm. And so I'm going to go ahead and go back up, fill out this information, and then I'm going to scroll back down and get back to the same page. And then we can continue from there. So I went ahead and filled out all the information. So I'm going to go ahead and click on I have confirmed. And then if you want to receive uh, additional updates, you can check this box, but I'm going to leave that blank. And let's go ahead and pay now. All right, so it's asking me to verify my phone number. So let me go ahead and verify this message. So I'm going to click next. Now let me enter my verification code. That was next again. So perfect. So now I verified it. Now let's go and proceed to the customer area. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my uh, email here. Click next and the password. And log in. Awesome. So now we are here on the new interface and just note that SiteGround actually updated and every new account at the time of this video has this new interface. So if you are watching this and you have an older account, you might be on the old interface, but hopefully by then it's already updated. So now we see here that we have our new website we just made. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and click on set up site. And you have two options. You can start a new website or migrate a website. So since it's our first time on here, we're going to click on start a new website. So hit select, go down below and I'm going to go with WordPress. So click WordPress right here. And then now go ahead and create a login email and password for your WordPress account. So I'm going to keep that the same as my site ground just for uh, ease sake. So I'm just going to go copy and paste that again. And let's go ahead and click on continue. Exit off this. Now, since I didn't actually add the uh, two options during the sign up, they're going to ask you again. So in case you have not added domain privacy yet, go ahead and click add. And then if you want the site ground um, site scanner part, you can, but I've never really messed with this one. And then go ahead and click on finish. So this is a first, seems like it's taking a little longer than usual. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and check my email and see if there's any updates I have on that. So I just checked my email and I do have a verification required email here. So most of you are watching this, you should have this. So go ahead and actually check your email in the meantime and go down below and simply click on this link to verify that you actually own this domain. So simply here, please verify your contact information. So I'm going to go ahead and verify the following steps and then see you on the next page. So perfect. I have verified my contact information. So now I'm going to go back and exit off of this now. And let's head back to the actual site ground. So here I'm back on the home page. So in case your actual website did not have any issues loading, you should see an option on the bottom right side of the screen saying your site tools and simply to manage it. But however, if you're not seeing that, simply just go back to home and now I should go to the websites tab here. Now, pretty much here you can edit a lot of things, but we're going to go ahead and see the current website we have here and just click on site tools. Now, once you click on site tools, I'm going to go over here to WordPress and then simply click on install and manage. Now I'm going to go over to this little arrow icon right here that says log in to admin panel and then click on this. Now what this is going to do is tell you to set up your WordPress website. So let's go ahead and we can hit start now, which I'll show you what happens. 
So pretty much what this is going to do is give you an option to choose your theme. However, this is not necessary for this tutorial. So I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom and just click on exit. But if you did want to go through that, ideally, it's like a uh, easier way to pick a theme. But for this sake, we don't need that. So now we are here on the actual WordPress dashboard. So congratulations. Now we can go ahead and do the actual fun stuff and start editing and designing your website. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is go over to the left side column right here and then hover over the plugins section and click on the word installed plugins. So now we have these two plugins right here. So simply click on this checkbox right there, check mark that, and then on the bulk actions, click this. And let's go ahead and deactivate this. So hit apply. So now that they're deactivated, let's uh, check the box one more time selecting both of them and now let's go ahead and delete them so hit apply again are you sure you want to delete yes and boom now the plugins are deleted all right now let's go to the pages tab and click on all pages and do the exact same thing so click on the page box right here title bulk actions let's go ahead and let's move to trash apply now before we do anything else click on the trash word right there Click the checkbox again, and then delete permanently, and then apply. So now our pages are cleaned up. Now let's go over to the post section, all post. And it looks like we do have one in the trash. So let's click on the trash here. Check the box. Go ahead and delete this one, and then hit apply. All right, perfect. So now let's go over here to the left side again. Let's hover over the settings tab and click on general. So now here we currently have the site title and just a tagline. So let me go ahead and actually open the current site and show you what this is actually showing. So this is what the current site looks like. And notice how that the actual tagline and title is up here showcasing on the actual tab. So if you want to edit this, you can literally put this, whatever your website's about or whatever you think will help it rank in the search engine, you could put that there. So I'll just put a um, you know, website tutorials and then just tagline best tutorial tutorials out there. This is just something random. You don't have to put this if you want to, but keep it like that. And then here we notice that we have it as HTTP. We want to have this as HTTPS because you want to make sure it's secure. So actually, once we type this in, let's go actually back to the dashboard for SiteGround. So if you haven't closed that out, simply go back here and then go to the security tab right there. Now, if you aren't on this screen, simply go to the websites again and then site, site tools and you should be go back to here and then pretty much hit security and then go down and click on SSL manager. So now let's go over to the right side and click and make sure less encrypt is actually checked. So it looks like we already have it there. So we're good to go. Let me click off of that. And it looks like it's not um, it's weird. Yeah. So click off this. Now let's go ahead and go down below to the three dots right here and click on this and then click enforce HTTPS. And now go and just turn this button on and perfect HTTPS enforce for the website tutorial.com that we just created. Now we can go back to WordPress. Here is the email in case you want to change this, then you can go from there, but I'm gonna keep mine the same. Time zone, date format, this is a personal preference. I don't really mess with this. And let's go ahead and click on save changes. Now it's going to ask you to log back in. So simply go back and log back in. And if you did forgot your password, simply click on lost password, check your email and then remake your password here. But mine's pretty simple. So I'm gonna go log back in now. Exit off this and notice that now we have the actual secure lock right there. So perfect. It worked out. So now you can tell the difference. If I were to go to the uh, old tab, you can see that says not secure. And now it just updated with the actual lock button here. So we're good to go. Now let's go back to WordPress and go back to the dashboard. So right off the bat, you've noticed that the entire dashboard has changed completely. 
this is the current, the old way it's always been. So I like the way this looks. So let's go ahead and click on dismiss. And then you can just like click these arrows. You don't really have to mess with anything here, but for just ease sake, it's just much better this way. Let's go back to the settings over here. Let's go down to reading, click on that. Now here's interesting. So if you have no blog post up for your website or you don't have any sort of a post that you're going to do for blogs at all, then this is not necessary to do, but ideally it's pretty much showing the amount on the preview that you can see. And usually I do about like five if I'm going to do this just because it looks cleaner. And then also the syndication fee is five too. And here simply is the summary is what I always check. And the way this makes sense. So imagine your blog has like, I don't know, it's like 10,000 plus words where it's like super, super long and it just keeps going down to, you know, infinity. If you click full text, it's literally going to go down forever. So click summary. So that shows a small section of your, um, like a preview. And then that's how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save changes here. And again, if you don't have any blog posts on your website, you can ignore this part. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save changes. And you can always edit this again anytime you want to. And then we have additional things right here. So let's go to the writing tab. I don't really mess with this too much, but if you want to go here for the emails, you can. We have the discussion tab here. And then media, if you want to upload anything here. And as far as the dimensions. And then the, the main one we're gonna edit is the permalink. So this is the one we're actually going to edit. Now it looks like mine's actually already on post name, which is looks like they updated the default, but pretty much if it's not on post name, go here and change it to post name because whenever you do create some sort of post, it's going to say your post name here. So let's say for instance, you had, um, you know, website tutorial, that would be essentially the domain.com slash website tutorial here. So it ranks in the search engines. It's much easier to find. And it's overall looks a lot cleaner compared to these other ones up here that are just like super not aesthetically pleasing or SEO friendly there. So I already have it set. So I'm just hit save changes either way. And then we have last thing is privacy. So I don't really mess with anything else, but pretty much permalinks and in general, you're pretty much set to go. And now, so I should go back to the dashboard, click on home. And now we're set here. So now let's get into the fun part. We're going to pick a theme and then get started with the designs. I know the previous parts were boring, but here we actually go. We're getting some progress here. So now let's hover over to the appearance tab over here on the left and click on themes. So currently it is on 2020 and depending on when you're watching this, it could say 2021, 2022, or pretty much whatever the themes they have at that time. So you can search themes up here. But for this sake, I'm going to click and add new theme right there. Or so you can click the um, button up here as well. It doesn't really matter. And just click on add new theme. Now I'm going to go over here to search themes. And I already have it showing right here. So Ocean WP, that's the one you want to type in. And then it's right here. And you can preview this, but I'm just go ahead and click install. All right, so now that you clicked install, go ahead and click on activate. Awesome. So perfect. So now let's go ahead and install another plugin for this theme so that we can start designing it. So they do showcase the recommended plugins up here. However, I'm going to show you how to actually install plugins the manual way. So go to plugins, hover over this and then click add new. Now, once you're on the plugin page, go up to the top and let's type in Elementor. And that should load up. If not, just hit enter. And now we have Elementor here and it is the most popular free page builder right now. To my knowledge, they just updated two days ago and four plus million active installs. So go ahead and click on install now. So now they're going to have some sort of pop up here, depending on um, the updates and features you're watching. But since you're following this tutorial, you don't need to go through this. If you'd like to feel free, but trust me, it's going to be a lot easier just to follow along with my video. So let's go ahead and skip this. And now we have Elementor installed and the Ocean WP theme. Now let's go ahead and click on this one. And up here, you can see there's two different plugins here. So might as well, let's go ahead and install these with this theme. So just click on begin installing plugins. And in case you don't have that pop up or it's not showing, then just simply go back to the plugins tab, add new, and just type in Ocean Extra and then WP form. So I'm gonna click on here both actions and then click on install and then press apply. 
So you might see that it failed, but we should be good to go in terms of the plugins. But for now, let's go ahead and let's currently look at our site right now and see how it looks. Awesome. So this is how the current site looks. Now let's go back to the dashboard and let's get started editing. So if you have this pop up, you can simply read through this if you'd like to, but this looks like it's just a thing for WordPress forms. So I'm just skip the setup here. I'm going to hit dismiss up here. So let's add some pages to this website. So go back to the left side, hover over pages, and then let's click on add new. Now pages are essentially your menu options. So I'm going to X off this and I'm just going to go with home for the first one. And then just simply click on publish, publish one more time. And then instead of going and viewing this, I'm going to exit off this. Let's go ahead and click add new again. I'm going to type in about us and click publish, publish one more time. Then exit off again. And I'm going to do this a few more times and just adding a few more pages. So add new one more time again. Let's do uh, services. This could be custom to whatever you like, but for now, I'm just going to come up with some menu names for now. Publish. And let me do uh, one more and let's say contact us and then publish, publish. Now, if I go to the pages tab again and click on all pages, it should showcase the four that we just created. So perfect. And we have home services, contact us and about us. So now let's actually go ahead and go down to the appearance tab and then click on menus. Now I'm gonna go here to the menu name and just type, or I already have it set, click on main menu and then create this menu. Now we have the pages we just created and yours might be different from mine, but I'm gonna start with the first one I want. So we have home, about us, services, then contact us, add to menu. And now you can rearrange this. So pretty much just click and drag, boom, we have it like this. And then about us, and then I'm gonna put uh, con services and contact us. And note that if you wanna have like a sub menu, you can just drag to the right. And this means that if I were to click on home, it'd have a down arrow showcasing what's underneath, which would be about us. And then you could do it like this too. But for this sake, I don't have any of those in this example. So I'm just gonna go ahead with this. And then let's go ahead and click on the main option here and save the menu. And now let's go over to our settings. And now let's go back to the reading section. Now you notice this is a new option that wasn't there before. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on a static page. The home page will be home and post page could be blog. But for this sake, we don't really need that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save changes. So let's go ahead to the dashboard and then let's go in I'm going to view the website on a different tab, but you can just click through it. So now you can see we have a menu up here. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and add some more designs into this website. So let's head back to the dashboard and let's make some few tweaks and then we can start actually designing the website. So go back to the dashboard and once you go there, go to pages and go to all pages and then simply click on to home. So hover over the home page, click on this. And before we start editing, I want you to go here to content layout and make sure you have 100% full width checked and then go down to title and then just disable page title. Let's update this. And now once it finishes updating, I'll preview and I'll show you the difference of what we just did. So if I click on preview, you'll notice that it's just pretty much shrunk in. So here's actually the uh, previous one where you have this like thick title section here and then this right uh, sidebar over here, it just have disappeared now. And now let's go ahead and actually start editing the page so we can go ahead and simply click edit with Elementor. All right, so now we are here on Elementor. So let's start designing. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to this plus sign right here and click on this. And now this will open up your structure of your website. So pretty much you have multiple choices the first one is essentially if you just want to have free space and have things centered, left align, right align. There's not many, uh, I'd say, barriers for this one. 
The second option is if you want to have your images and text on one side and then the opposite on the other. This way you can make it mobile responsive, tablet responsive, and overall it makes it balance on top of each other. Then we have the columns here. It's pretty much the same concept. It's just pretty much dividing the website in between a spacing. And for the start, we're going to click on the second option here with the two squares. So click on this option. Now, once you have this selected, you'll notice you have a blue section here with the entire thing outlined with a, a little tiny blue line. So pretty much the plus sign is where you add your actual content. So you see if I drag my mouse over the plus sign, click on this. Now we have this tab over here and I'm going to insert an image. So pretty much hover over this, click and then drag it over. And once you see this blue line pop up, let go and boom, now you have an image. Now before we add an image, let me go to the left side and add it, edit this real quick. So hover over, click on it. See this heading option? Click it, drag it in. And now we have this heading text. So let me add and let me to, uh, put fully automate your business. Now I'm just making up some stuff for this example. And you can also edit it here as well. So if you want to put that there and you can change the sizing, I'm going to make this an H1. And then you can add a link if you want to. But since this is text, we don't have to worry about this. And now let's duplicate this. So pretty much hover your mouse anywhere over you see it as long as you have this row pretty much um, there. Once your mouse is over that, right click and then duplicate. And now we just made a second text. Now I'm going to change this to an H2 just so it's a little smaller. And then let's just may say um, cloud-based social media marketing management and growth and that's the text we're gonna have right there and now let's go ahead and hit this arrow and see how the website currently looks this is how it currently looks so now let's add one more thing and that's going to be a button so i'm gonna go ahead and go down to this plus sign again click it and click the first option here and now this if i click on this plus sign it brings back the uh, left panel over here. And now you see this option called button. So now I'm gonna click it, drag it in. And now we have this button here. So basically the goal of this is to pretty much get the button. So you saw what I did is pretty much, once you're onto this space, white space here, just click and drag and boom, you have it here. Now, if you wanna do the same thing again, you can do the same thing there. But uh, let me see if I can drag it back again. Boom, all right, perfect. So now we have this button here. Now I'm going to edit the text so you can double click the text there or just go on the left side where it says um, the words click here in text. And let's just type in learn more. And the type, this just changes the color of it, but uh, we're just gonna keep it default because we're gonna change it to a custom color. I'm gonna go with medium and let's go ahead and leave the link for now. We're not gonna worry about this. And it's what the website currently looks like. Now it looks kind of weird. So one thing we're going to do is actually add an image. So I have a pre-image already downloaded, but let me show you the website that I got, got this from. So the website I'm using is Undraw. So pretty much you can go to undraw.co, click on browse. And once you click on browse, it's going to open up this section here. Now this is a color. You can change this color to whatever you'd like. I'm just going to go with this color right here and I'm going to copy this. And now we have this nice looking blue. So now if I were to click on the search option, let's just type in um, social media for now. So now load it up and I wanna go down to the, let's see this option down here at the bottom, click it and click download PNG. And basically once you click that and download it, you're set to go, now you can upload it. And if you notice the other option is SVG. So if you do use a um, software tool to edit your posts, then you can do this. But for this example, we're going to use the PNG since we're not going to be resizing and editing it like that. So now let's go back to our dashboard, Elementor. Click on this image, hover over to the left side and click on choose image. So once this pops up, simply click on select files and then upload the image. So if you can't find it, just type it in. But I've already done that to save some time. So let's go to the media library now and let's click on this image. And then just go down to the right side, hit insert image. And now we have this nice little illustration image on the right side. And now what we want to do is go to this color button 
and then we're going to change the color of this. So to change the color, it's always going to be on the style tab, which is the middle section. Click the middle section. Now we have topography, which is essentially the type of font. So I'm going to change that. So click on that button, go to family, click on default and type in monster rat, monster rats. And then for the weight, let's try 600 and we're good there. Now text shadow, ignore this text color. And we have background color. So let's click on the background color and let's copy and paste the color that we took from this one. So if you can't remember, it's pretty much this one, 00B0FF. And now let's click back. All right, now we have it set there. Now let's go ahead and click on to the text, the cloud-based social media font. Go to the middle section styling here and let's change the topography to monster rats so that it is concise and it's the same. So consistent right there. And then let's go to the top fully automate your business. Go to the style tab there. Topography, default family, and change that to Montserrat as well. Now for this one, I'm going to increase the size. So let's see if I can make it, let's do 32. And then let's check back and see how that looks. Okay. And now let's go ahead and go to the top section right here of the blue the edit section and click on this. And now we have this option here. We currently have box and we have full width. So if I were to let go of this, you can see how there's kind of spacing. So I hit full width. It's basically just literally the full width. There's no spacing everywhere. So depending on what style your website you want to make, I like to go with the box for now. And let's type in, depending on your computer screen, 1,100 is a good size for me. I'll just keep the stretch on here and check it out. And now let's go ahead and see this gray little corner. When you hover over this box, this gray thing pops up. Same thing over here. Let's click on this gray box here. Now let's hover to the left side and see vertical align. I want to put this in the center or the middle because right now it's at the top. So middle, boom, now it's in the middle. Bring this back, preview it. Now it's looking a little better. So all we need to do now is add some spacing on the top. So click on these blue Dot to the middle one more time. And now let's click on to the advanced section this time. So here is the padding. And pretty much this is going to have some space in between. You'll see what I'm talking about once I click it. So I'm going to unlink this. On the top, let's do 150. And on the bottom, let's do 150. And now you see we have the spacing here. So this pretty much is the first section of your website. Super simple and clean, nothing too complicated. And this is just overall just showing you the basic tool of how to use Elementor and just ways you can customize things. Now let's go on to the next section and continue making the website. Now one thing I forgot to do before we continue is add some spacing between this one. So let's click on this text here because I feel like it's a little close. Let's go to advance, uncheck the padding and let's do bottom. Let's try 20, see how that looks. And then same for the button, click on the cloud management system text here, go to advanced and then uncheck the padding link and then go bottom. Let's do 10, click back and the spacing looks a little better. Not too much. I might want to change the actual size of this font. Maybe I can do 40. Let me see if that does anything. Check it out here. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it with the um, 32. Keep it at 32, this is pretty solid. And let me just zoom it out. And yeah, for now, let's keep it like that. And instead, let me let me actually increase the size of font on this one and decrease the weight, because I believe it's on, um, yeah, so I like it that way. And let's see if, uh, 24, 24 looks better. Yeah, let's keep it at 24 for now. Pretty simple. And let's decrease the uh, current thing up here. So I accidentally clicked and dragged the text here. So let me just redrag this back to the top of this. Let me see one second. All right, perfect. Now we're back. And let's see if I can change the, uh, the bottom street to 10. See how that looks. Yeah, so 10, 10, 20 is not too much of a difference. We can add little tweaks later. But for now, I just want to add a little bit of spacing. So 10 here. Change the font size there. Cut it at 10 and then we just have to learn more, learn more button down there. 
Now let's add the next section. So instead of clicking the plus sign this time, we're going to click onto this add template, the gray one on the right. So now that once this loads, this basically showcases a bunch of templates that you can already implement into your website right away. You don't even have to build your website and just go ahead and start editing it and just changing the text. And then obviously they have a pro version, which is a premium plan. But for now, since we're using the free option, we're very limited with what we can choose. And we're not going to go to the pages tab. We're just going to go to the block section right here. So click on this. So blocks are pretty much pre-built sections that you can insert anywhere into your website without having to make it from scratch. And they have quite a good source of them here. So you can choose from a lot of different options, but there's one specific one I just want to implement right away. And it's one, the percentage one right here. So I'm gonna click on this one. So now you can see what it looks like as a preview. So I'm gonna go ahead to the right top here. And once it loads up, I'm just gonna insert this into my website. So now you can see it loaded onto the page. So here we can go ahead and edit this. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just click on here. And we can take out this percentage section. So if you don't need the percent, you can, but um, for the number suffix, just erase that. I'm gonna keep the number there. And for this one, I'm gonna put um, just the word clients and then rinse and repeat. I'm gonna go to the next tab, erase the setting. And let's just do um, 300 counts managed. Here we can just put, uh, let's see. 12 locations and I'm just making up stuff for now. And then this one, let's click on the next section, take this out and let's just put, um, Hmm, let's just do B dollar street. This number is quite large, but let's see how it looks. Yeah, it looks a little strange for me. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep it to small numbers. And let's just do um, 20 partnerships. So over here, I'm just making up terms for this one, but uh, let's go back out now. Not sure why the, um, when I hit the X thing disappeared, that's kind of weird, but um, might just need to update the website and that might be able to fix it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and um, click this middle section here, the blue dots, go to style, go down to the actual background type, click on classic, and then color. And let's copy into that blue color we had earlier. And let's keep it like this for now. And now we can see the new change. So actually let's go ahead and Turn this into a gradient so it looks a little better. So the blue color is still up there. I'm going to copy the blue color again. And I'm just going to simply hover the mouse over to the right just a little bit. So that's the color I have currently selected. And now let's go ahead and change the text color here. So I just click on this box. You can see the text color is gray. Change the white right there. Same thing. Click on this box. Go to style. Text color. White. Rinse repeat. Click on this text box. Style white click on this text box style and then white and now let's go add a little cool little effect so click on the blue again go to advance and let's see i have padding of um 100 here let me see if this um yeah keep it like that if you don't have that selected just keep it like this and then let's go to style go down to shape divider make sure you have the blue section selected for the top, let's go with the clouds and then let's edit the height and you can play around with the height here. But um, pretty much this is like a cool little cloud effect. This is just showcasing you what options are available. Normally people like to keep it simple, but um, so you can change it to mountains, pyramids, tilts, the list goes on. I just keep clouds for now. And then let's see if I can increase the actual um, top padding. Let's do 150. And let's do the same for the bottom. Click it out, see how this currently looks. So actually, let me update the site really quick, just because the, um, looks like I must have reset some settings. So go back here. Let me refresh this real quick. Um, click back. All right, so now it's showing again. So now we're good back to go. So in case your WordPress is like lagging or something or has some sort of um, technical error, just 
update, make sure you save it first, then refresh the page, and then you should be set to go. So sometimes the clouds, they get like cut off because of the way the sizing is. Cause see how it's zoomed in and we have this like smaller rectangle. When I widen it out, it like, you see how it messes up there. So what we could do is let me see if, um, changing the stretching keeps it like that still. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the style, go to shape divider. And I'm just gonna play around with this, uh, this height effect. You could flip it too if you want to, but the most part, I think this looks pretty solid. I'm just gonna keep it like this. And the bottom, we could actually change that to 100 and see if that makes it shorter. Well, actually, my bad. There's 100 right there. And we'll just keep it like that. So, for the sake of design purposes, pretty simple, nothing too crazy. And let me just go ahead and, um, a little bit better. All right, yeah. All right, okay, I like this one much better. The two is a little too close. So yeah, pretty much set. Now we have this little showcase of data right here. So let's go ahead and hit the update button. So if you want to preview, you can actually just go ahead in this eyeball and just click on this and it opens up a new tab. And now you can see what the website currently looks like. Now let's go back to Elementor and continue adding the next section. So let's add the next section and this one's going to be pretty quick and easy to do as well. So go ahead, we're gonna click on the add templates again. And then once it loads up, let's go click on the blocks section here. Now I'm gonna type in on the right search bar here for services right there. And these are the current options we have available. So the one that I want to use for this example is this one right here, image services. You could literally use whatever you want, but um, I'm just gonna show you with this template what you can do with this. So this is the basic one, looks pretty plain, nothing crazy, but let me show you what you can do with this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is edit the actual services text right there. Click on it, go to styles, topography, make sure it's on monster rats, check it. And then for the weight, I'm gonna put it, let's try, um, yeah, 700 looks pretty solid. I'm gonna keep the size there. And the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and uh, click on this actual image and let's delete this image right here. And same, and for this we can leave these because we're gonna basically duplicate this section. So what we're gonna do is actually change this to, let's do social media marketing, change that to uh, topography, click on the text. And let's see here, content, topography, monster rats, and then here, we could just keep the filler text for now. I don't know to um, put for the actual like info here. So I'm just keeping like this, change the topography to monster right again. And then let's go ahead and add an image. So let me go back, back to the actual down here. So the plus sign, click this, add a simple box, click the plus sign again, and just drag an image in. And now what we're gonna do is actually drag this image let me see if I can get it to work. Yeah, drag it, click it right above the social media name here. Now, what we're gonna do is actually upload a picture and I use some from Undraw. So literally go to undraw.com or whatever picture site you wanna use and just download a few of these images so you can use this for this example. So any of them, you can do it. Doesn't matter what, what you type in. And let's go, once you have three downloaded, then you're set to go. So let's go back home. I'm gonna go ahead and choose an image. So let's go select the files. So here I just type in undraw and have quite a lot of images. So make sure I have the ones that are PNG. So I got this one. Looks like, uh, let me see if I have, um, yeah, I already used this one too. So let me go and keep this one. So I'll go to this one, that one, and then uh, this one. Okay, so I have three images here uploading them there. Right now I'm only gonna upload one right now. And it looks like this one's the wrong color. So let me see if I can find another image and download it. So let's see. Just download this one really quick. So just download the image. So let me go back to Elementor. Upload that image really quick. Just click here, upload it. And now we have three images. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this first image here. Insert media. And for this, I'm gonna do custom. Let's just do, um, I'm just do 640 by 640 because some of these images aren't exactly the same size. So it's a little uneven, but um, 
Ideally, if you had a software tool, you can resize them better. But for this sake, I'm just going to do it like this. And then now what I'm going to do is go to this button. You saw this, I just clicked on it. Yeah, it looks like, um, yeah, WordPress is acting a little weird right now. What I need to do is update it again because uh, some right now it looks like it's bugging out. So my button just disappeared out of nowhere. So let me update it and refresh really quick and see what happens. It looks like my button literally just disappears. So let me just add another button. No biggie. Click on this. Center it. Change the text. Let's do learn more here. And then let's go ahead and change the topography. Monster rats. Wait. Let's try, let's try 600. And then the color. So the background color right here. Command V, this color link right there. So 00B0FF. And then you can notice whenever uh, I hover over this, this like green box pops up. And I don't really like the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of that completely. So let's go click on the box and pretty much Let's see, that's currently a button. So let me select the actual uh, style here. Let's see how the border looks. So I click this gray box right there. Border type, let's do none. And then hover. Let's change this to the teal blue. So that way you can actually tell like when you hover it over it. And let's see how that looks. Boom, yep. Looks a little better. And now let's go to the actual button and make sure we have it as a uh, the radius, let's do four. That way it has some sort of roundedness to the button. Make sure it looks like that. And if you can't tell, like watch if I put um 40, you see it went super round. So just mess with that if you want to make it a little different shape. But overall, it's pretty much a simple design right there. Now, instead of us doing it over and over and over again, we're just going to literally right click, duplicate, duplicate again. And then go to these and just delete these. So right click and delete there. Right click, delete there. And then click on this image. And let's just choose the images that we have yet to upload. So let me put this one in the middle. Insert. And then Sam around the right side. Choose this image here. Boom. Inserts. And let's do um, viral hashtags. And then... Uh, automated posts or let's just automate posts yes yeah, automated posts and boom so now it looks like it's a little off because of the way so let me try to um let's take off this so let's do let's take off let's just put social media boom Let's click off of this, see how this currently looks. So it looks pretty even. So boom, bam. Now we have these three posts here. So now we let's go and check this. So actually, here's my read more button. Looks like it just randomly disappeared up here. So let's delete this actually. And we didn't do we did the wrong step. So command Z. Looks like I clicked on the wrong thing. So click this one. Let's delete the blue section. All right, perfect. Now we got it. So in case you did some mess up. You can go there or you can go to this button down history and then go to like your last thing you just had. But let's go back to our tab and uh, let's go update first. Now let's preview the site. So here we are on the current site. Let me exit off my downloads really quick. Scroll down. We have this cloud section here. Then we have the services we just created. Boom, bam, bam, right there. So now let's add the next section. So let's go down below again. Add another template and I already have it on the blocks tab. If you don't just click on the blocks and this time let's search and just type in the word test. And now we have testimonials. So let's scroll down and I'm going to use this one right here. You can choose whichever one you want to, but for this sake, just pick this double one right there and then insert. All right. Now we have the testimonials here. So let's go ahead and let's change this and put um, the text our clients say let's go to style tab text color same topography let's change this to monster rats and let's change the weight to 500 and now let's go to the top box right there the blue edit section click on this go to style and let's go to gradients 
And let's change the color. So the first color, I'm gonna copy the same blue we had. There's the color code right there. If you wanna use this, 00B0FF. And then here, I'm gonna copy it again and just tilt it slightly over. There we go, slight change. Now, I want to change this box. So let's click on this gray box right there. You can see it's a kind of overlapping, but just highlight the gray box so that you get this entire text section. Go to style, classic, color, white, boom. And then do the same on this side. Click the gray box, select, style, background type, classic, color, and white. Now, if I were to zoom out, you'll see we have this here. Now, let's go ahead and let's change this uh, text color to white now. Now, it's easier to see. And then also the bottom text, you could edit this, delete it. I mean, it really doesn't matter. But let's see if... Um, Changes out, and actually, let me see if I can. Um, here we go. Title. So click if you want to change the title. It looks like it's separated. So uh, instead of the content, the content section is up here. So if you do want to change that, that's the content section. I'm gonna keep it black, and it looks like it didn't stay. So click black right there. Title. Let's change this to black as well. Let's see how that looks. Looks like it didn't change. Let me see. There we go. Yeah, I'm not sure why it keeps um, reversing, but yeah. All right. Perfect here. And let me do the same over there. So style, title, topography. I want this to be black. Let me make sure this is changing. Sometimes it's lags, but uh, click it. Out. All right, perfect. Now, let's add a little cool little effect. So let's go click on the blue top again. Let's go down to Shape Divider. So I'm on the Styles tab one more time. Go down, Shape Divider. Type, let's do, uh, let's try Tilt, see how this looks. All right, so now let's actually add some padding. So let's do, um, let's do 150, see how that looks. Same for the bottom, 150 there. Now let's go back to style and let me adjust the um, shape divider, the height. Might be too much, so just slightly tilt right there. Nothing too crazy. All right, services, boom. What are clients saying? And then let's go for the bottom section. So we're on the shape divider styles tab. Just click bottom. And let's add a little fancy effect, just waves. Now this one's a little too close, so let's change the height. Slight change like this and see how this looks. So nothing too crazy. I would actually increase the bottom by another 50. 200 and let's try it on the top too. See how this looks. So let me add some more wave effect just so you can see it. So shape divider, bottom, height. And let's see about the width. So yeah, make it a little more flat. I could flip it too, but I'm gonna keep it like this. And here's a simple little cool aesthetic design here. Now that's unnecessary, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you what's possible with the free Elementor and WordPress templates. So now this pretty much ends the client testimonial section. So now let's go ahead and click update. And let's add the next section. So now let's add an about us section. So once again, I'm going to add another template and this time I click on about. Now, once this decides to load up, it should show us, yeah, so here we are. Now we have multiple options and they have this video one here, looks pretty clean. They have this section here. But what I'm gonna do is click on and let's see the, um, I like the left, to right side, but I don't want to have a video. But let's just click this option anyways, and then go ahead and once it loads up, we can insert this. So pretty much you can have a video here, but for this sake, I'm going to remove this actually. So let's delete, cancel that, and let's replace this with an image. 
So the image I want to use is on the undraw.com website. And let me see if I can find one that stands out. So for this sake, it looks like I'm just gonna use this one right here. Looks pretty cool. Download. And let's go back to the image dashboard here. And let's just choose image and upload that into our image placeholder. So here's the image, so I'm just gonna hit insert. And now we have a nice little image here. So now about the company, and for this, I'm gonna click on it, Command A or Control A if you're on Windows. Go to style and pretty much uh, make sure the text is black. Topography, it is Montserrat. And then about the company, same thing, go to style, change it to Montserrat. And I, I like this setup, it looks pretty clean. I'm gonna keep the font, nothing too much to change about this. And pretty much here's the setup now. So now let's go ahead and add a contact us section. So note that this is the free version of Elementor. So you're limited with what you can do, but let me just showcase you what's possible. So we're back again on the template contact. Now, if you wanna have like a clean looking sign up contact form where it has like your name, email, fill out the blanks, then you're most likely going to need to upgrade to Elementor Premium, or you can do another theme out there. They're quite expensive if you're on a budget, but ideally, if you're trying to have the nice aesthetic look, that's, you're very limited, I say, with your options. They do have basic free email style sign up contact forms, but the customizable, uh, but being able to customize it, make it look aesthetically pleasing, it's very minimal. So just keep that in mind but just showing you really what is the options out there. So ideally I like the like simple sleek, just the get in touch section, but these are premium. So just for this example, we're just gonna go with the um, regular free one for now. And then I'll showcase an additional way where you can add a free sign up contact form. Looks doesn't look like too, I'll say amazing, but it's better than nothing. And then if you want me to make a alternative video showcasing the premium templates, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But let's just go ahead and click insert. So right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this contact word here. I don't need this. And then I'll just say, um, contact us company. I'm gonna change the style here to the blue that we've been using. And then also I'm gonna change the topography, the weight to, let's try 500, Montserrat. And boom, click out here. And then basically it looks like the London Eye is the map for here. That's just for a placeholder, but let's click here and let's see what we have. So Facebook, Twitter, Gmail. So let me take get rid of some of these. So let's take rid of Google. Dribble, keep those, and YouTube, I just keep these five here. So basically, primary color, I want them to be the blue, and then I want the secondary color to be white. So if I hover over this, notice how it turns the green, which was the default. So now we have to pretty much click this icon tab, click icon here, and then basically uh, change that. So I'm gonna just go with the default blue here, and let's see how this looks. So it looks kind of weird, so let me, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. So what I'm gonna do is actually, hold on. Copy the blue we currently use for the secondary, primary, make that white. So let's see how that looks. Boom, you can see that, it looks pretty cool. I, I like this effect. I want mine to be rounded. So let's go in, um, let's go advanced border, SC5. How does this look? Do solid actually. And that's on the actual, so I actually clicked on the wrong section. Hold on, let me a second. So my bad, I clicked on the actual, like the entire box. What we need to do is actually go to style 
and do the border radius here. So now you can see, okay, so now type 50, pretty much you have circles here. So let's go back to advanced border here and just remove that section there and change that to none on the advanced tab, but make sure you're on style and doing the border radius there. All right, so perfect. So here we are. So here's pretty much a contact form here. Nothing too fancy, but uh, what I'd like to do is actually add a background just because I feel like it needs uh, some sort of section. So let's see what color should we change this to. What I'm actually going to do is I have this color picker uh, plugin on Google Chrome. So pretty much it lets me find any colors. So I'm going to try and do this one really quick. So let me exit off this. Let me change this to... So I highlighted this, click this button here, the middle one, background type. Let's just go classic for now. I want to experiment with this color, see how this looks. Change this to white. And let's see how this currently looks. All right, so I'm going to keep it like that and uh, exit off this. So I'm scrolling down, currently what we've created so far. And boom, contact us. So I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty basic, pretty simple, but um, with the, again, with the default settings, we have very limited stuff with the actual contact form. So let me see if I can decrease uh, this top one, make it a little smaller. Same with the bottom, 50 here. All right, looks pretty cool. And since this was a wave, let's see if I can um, finish this wave. So let's try see how the top wave looks like so basically i clicked this middle one went to style gout went down to shape divider again and let's see clouds looks a little too too much we have the curve i invert the curve it could look like that but it looks kind of weird to me same with that one then we have the waves again and then we have wave brushes this might be a little too much for me. Wave pattern. Yeah, that one looks too crazy. And currently it looks like tilt. Let's try tilt opacity. Let's see how this one looks. So that's currently the start right there. Nothing too fancy. Maybe we could change the um the way it looks, but yeah, I'm gonna do a slight, like super minimal to where you can barely tell, but it's just there and see how that looks. Yeah, I'm not too big a fan of it. So you know what, we're just gonna go ahead and go with none. Keep it simple, nothing too crazy and boom. So now let's go ahead and click update. So now let's preview the website, see what we currently create so far. So pretty much here we go. Got the home section, got some loading screens services you can hover over these what clients are saying section here about the company and then overall how to get in contact with them so now all we need to do now is update the actual top the menu section here and then also add a footer section here and then i'll show you additional cool tricks and tips to make your website look a lot better so let's go in and start editing our menu so now let's edit this menu up here and make it look a lot cleaner. So if you're on this page right here, simply go customize this. And if you just happen to get lost, you weren't on this, simply go back to your dashboard, visit the site again, and just click customize up here. So we're going to edit this first My WordPress section right there. So simply click on site identity and the site title is basically what you put. So I'm just going to put on um, website tutorials. And then here, I mean, this is a tag line. I'm just going to keep that blank. And if you had a site icon, you can upload that there. Let's go back here. Now let's go to the actual header section. So click on this. Let's go to general. And for the style, click on transparent. So since this is a white background, you might not see any difference. But once it decides to finish uploading, I'll showcase a little tweak and pretty much if you did have a colored background the entire background of this section would be the color of the background and it's this little tiny line right there let's get rid of this by clicking the header border bottom unchecking that and now the line is gone and then now you can see there's additional settings here but we're not going to mess with these let's go back 
Now, if you want to upload a logo, you can here, but we don't have one for this video. For the menu, click on this one. Now, let's go ahead and let's scroll down. And there is a search section that I want to unclick. So right here, search icon. Click that, disable that. So now we got rid of that little search icon there. And see how the color currently is blue. So we're set to go for the hover color. But if you did want to edit that, you could just change it right there under main styling to green. And you can see it changes to green. So I'm going to go and put that back to the blue. See if I have my thing still copied. It looks like I have the wrong blue there. So yeah, let's see. Keep it at that blue. Looks pretty good. So let's go back. And then here's social menu. We don't need to enable that there. And then also at the mobile menu, which you don't have to mess with at this point right now. So now let's click on top bar, click on general, then click enable top bar, uncheck that, and that will get rid of this top bar right here. All right, perfect. So now let's go back, just click on publish. And now it's published. If we were to refresh this page, let me actually exit off of this once it decides to load. So now this is our current website here. So now you can see we have these menu looking much cleaner. We have this section here scrolling down and now let's go and add a footer now so we have to go back to the top left corner our website name and go to the dashboard and now let's go over to appearance and then go to menus and now we're gonna have to create a new menu so we'll go click click create new menu up here and menu i'm going to name this footer click create menu and i'm going to select the footer option down here and then let's view all of our pages. So I'm going to go home, about us, contact us, services, add this to the menu, and then I'm going to rearrange this according to the order I want to put them. So I'm basically just change it like that. And now save the menu. So now let's go to the left side. And you see this thing called theme panel? Click on this. And just go ahead and skip right here. All right, now if I scroll down, there's this footer bottom option. So we can go here. So now if we scroll down to the bottom. You'll see we have this super basic footer right here. So you can change this to copyright website tutorials. And that's my domain name. So if you're wondering like, why did I misspell it? <laughs> I did it. That's my domain name, but, um, that's a super basic way to do it, but um, you can change the color stuff too here. But let me show you a better way, one that actually makes more sense and one that just does not look super simple. But if you're cool with this, you don't care, feel free to go with this one. But for this sake, I'm not going to publish this. So I'm actually going to delete it by checking this box right here. So now it is gone. So now let's publish this. And now let's publish, exit off here. And now we're back on the dashboard. Now go back to theme panel and click on my library this time. Now here, let's add a new, click the add new button right there. And let's type the word footer. And before we proceed, make sure content layout, 100% full width and title, disable that publish and then all you need to do now is click edit with elementor all right so now let's go ahead and just edit like normally so click the plus sign i'm gonna go with three and i'm going to click into the box and before i do that actually edit the um, background let's make it let's make it match the one that we had with the uh contact section so make it a little dark right there and let's click on the plus sign let's drag in the header and let's just put um, copyright 2020 website tutorial. And let's change this to white monster rats. And uh, let's see how this looks. All right, yeah, it looks pretty solid. I might make it a little smaller. Let's see. Size wise 20 with um, 
That's a little too thin for me. Let's do 24. Oh, that's too much. And uh, make sure this is centered. Go back. All right. Yeah, let me do... Uh, let's do 500, actually. And then for this section, this is a social media icon. So pretty much... Let's see which one should I add in for this one. Let me type in social icon. So right here, drag that in. And let's go ahead and let's keep it like these. But let's go to style and let's do custom. Primary color. Actually, let me go to my, um, let me get the color, the original blue I was using so it can match here. So give me one second. So this is the original color I was using for um, everything. So I'm gonna keep it like this. And then secondary color, I'll just keep it like that. Border type solid with, um, actually no, hold on. Let's do border radius first. 50 circle. Let's see how that looks. And uh, size, uh, keep mine fairly small. And let's see how that kind of looks there. And then uh, let me make sure that my thing's set up here evenly too. Let's click this. Let's put me in the middle. Awesome here. Middle there. And then click on this last tab right there and type in menu. Now this is an option called custom menu. Drag that in. And then once it loads, you're gonna add the right here select menu, the footer we made in the library earlier so boom now we have the footer section and menu link color let's change this to white which is fff and then hover link will be the one that we uh that we just input it there so boom on size pin let's see yeah it looks solid there awesome perfect so now let's go back and let's hit update. And now let's go to the dashboard, exit back. Now let's go to the dashboard and let's go above it. Click on visit site. So I'm gonna open the link in new tab. And let's scroll all the way to the bottom and notice nothing is there. So let's go hit customize on the top. And then once it starts to load, let's go down to footer widgets. And let's select the template we just created. So footer. And then uncheck the container. Let me show you visually so you can see it before I do any edits. So we have this here. Uncheck the container. Let's do zero, zero, zero. And let's go ahead and change the background color to the color that we had for the actual. Let's see. This color right here is so let me get my color plugin. Get it, let's copy this here. And let me exit off of that really quick. All right, background color, copy this. And let's see how it looks, boom. So now, let's hit publish. Let's exit off this. And let's scroll to the bottom. So here we are with our current footer right there. So again, you can play around with this, change up some settings, but overall, these are the current ones we have here. So this is what we created so far. You can see down here, footer, hover over this. Now, the one thing we are missing is whenever I click on this link, nothing happens. So what I wanna do is go to top, click on Edit with Elementor, and let me show you how to add link clicks. So pretty much you need to scroll down for, let's go to services, for instance, click on this plus sign, click on the plus here, and just click on the box. Now. Basically, you click the plus sign again, and then we're gonna go to the search widget section, and then drag in menu anchor. Now for this, I'm just gonna type in services, and make sure you remember exactly word by word, letter case by letter case, how you type this in. So if you do it all lowercase, it has to be all lowercase. So I'm not gonna click update yet. I'm gonna go up to learn more. And for the link section, I'm gonna leave this hashtag mark here type services here, and then I'm gonna go down and hit update. 
And now watch this. When I click preview, go down, boom, it goes straight to services. So now let's do one for um, the about us section, services here and contact us. So now in order to do this, what we're going to need to do is go back to the actual dashboard. So let's go to my elementary section, edit back to the dashboard. And before we do this, actually, let's let's edit with Elementor one second. So before we go to the dashboard, go back to edit with Elementor and let's scroll down and let's add uh, the other anchor points. So simply click the plus sign again, add the square box, click the plus, type in anchor. So drag that in. And for this one, I'm just going to put about. And then I'm going to do the same down here for uh, contact us. Click it, just type in anchor and then drag it over here. And with this one, I'm just gonna put um, contact. And now I'm going to hit update. Now, if you haven't already, go back to dashboard, just simply go now and click exit the dashboard here. So I already have that opened up. And let's go to the appearance section and go to the menus tab. Now on here, you see how we have currently have home. Basically, what we're going to need to do is make an additional page. And then I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So a custom link, if we were to go and just type in for the URL, just put hashtag services. We add this to menu, watch what happens. We now have this custom menu item here. So now we can go and actually change this to services and then now it's going to go here so if i were to and i currently have this on footer so let me actually switch the menu to main so it makes more sense so just scratch what you just saw don't don't follow along that was for the footer we could have just done the footer too but i'll do the main first just to show you what happened so basically custom links let's do um hashtag services and let's just put um services here see what happens Perfect, so now we have services here. Now we have two services. So for example purposes, I'm gonna save it just so you can see what I'm talking about. And once that loads, I'm gonna go preview the website again. So basically visit the site. So now we have this new service menu we just made. So when I click it, boom, it drags right down. So now you can see that. So pretty much what you wanna do is go back to the dashboard to appearance menus you want to get rid of the services you have here. So bye bye to this one, remove. And then you would rinse and repeat with a custom link, type in um, about, about us. Then same for contact. So let's do contact, contact us. And you can clearly see which one is page and which one's custom link, so you know which one to delete. So I'm gonna remove the about us here, contact us, remove here, and let's drag it, let's put it here, and keep it like that. So I'm gonna hit save menu. Now let's just switch to footer now since we're on this page already. Hit select. And now we just rinse and repeat what we just did. So custom links, do it again, so it's about us add to menu URL is uh, services services and make sure you make sure it's the exact spelling or it might not work and then um, contact contact us add to menu and let's go ahead and let's remove all of these here services remove contact us page remove and only keep the custom links here so about us services contact save the menu there so now i'm going to go to websites preview refresh and let's test this out so now let's go to about us right there scroll up again services then contact us perfect now let's do it again here about us services and contact Contact us is not working. So let's go back. Mm, let's see, should it be the same? Not too sure why that is not working. 
and I'm pretty positive I put um let me check what I put yeah hashtag contact hmm that's weird let me try it again maybe maybe I need to make it again maybe it's just something bug, uh, bugged out so let me actually try to delete it and try that again not sure why that didn't work both do contact contact us save the menu and I guess it might have been um, yeah this should be saved because it worked on the top oh it, it works oh I guess yes see it was working but since we're already there like it can't it literally can't move to so watch if I go like this see it okay so it was working I thought I was tripping out but awesome so everything is working good looking clean so now we pretty much defined and made the bulk the front page of the website but now I want to show you additional things in case you wanted to add into in case you wanted to add individual pages so for instance instead of it just going to something like this on the front page, you want it to go into a new window into that actual page. So let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard. So here I am, let's go to pages and then go and add another page. Now here, let me just type in, um, for this sake, let's just do, let me see what we have right now, about us. I technically could change the about us section into another about us, but let me just do, um, let's see what I can add on the top. I could say blog, but I don't want to put the, um, let me just put blog for now. Yeah, let's do blog. Let's do, uh, let's see, hundred percent full width title disabled. Yeah. Let's, let's use blog for the example for this one so that you can have a better visual of how this works. And now let's go to the, Appearance, menus, and let's add blog to the menu. So let me just drag it. Let me put it uh, in the middle right here. So boom, save the menu. And if I go to the website, refresh this, it will pop up. And it looks like I added it to the footer. Yep. So that was the footer one up here. So let me switch my menu to main, select that, add blog again, drag it in, and let's save menu. And now let's go and check it this time. So this time it should be at the top now. All right, perfect. So now we have this new page. So instead of it going to something on the front page, just click on blog. And now we are here. So. Pretty much the easiest way to edit this is literally go edit with Elementor and you can click on there. And sometimes if it's not working, you just go back to the home dashboard, go to pages and let's go to all pages, go to blog and click on this blog right here. And then just click edit with Elementor and that should open up and then you're set to go. So ideally you just start and edit this just like you normally did in the beginning of the tutorial. But this is also, I'm going to show you how to edit like in custom pages. And then I'm also show you how to actually make this into a blog page. So for right now, just to pretend this wasn't the word blog. Let's just say this was the about us tab. You just add another template and there we have pre-built pages here too. So let's see. And once this loads up, let me just type in about. And this is the one I like to use a lot where I click on that red one, pinkish one, and then insert. So now here you could pretty much change whatever you want, change the background, see style. Let's go to the overlay, change this to like a blue maybe. Like blue, same here to a teal. You can delete this tab, you don't want it. Uh, same with this thing here. Let's delete that. Let's see, I delete all of this here and just have a video. And then pretty much you got testimonials, whatnot, and then you can go up here. Now, if I were to save this, let's click it. Let's go ahead and preview the changes. So currently on the main page, this one looks 
a little strange because of the text, but all you need to do is basically rechange that. So if I go back home, you could edit the actual customization part and then just change the color of the text here. But for this sake, I'm just gonna leave it. And I wanna show you something really quick. So this is the default right now. So in case you wanted to update this, you could add like a um, background behind this and change this to white. But for this sake, I'm gonna keep it like this because I'm using a front page design, but I'm just showing you this example. So instead of it going like on the front like this, now you can have it to where you click on blog and it opens up in essentially a new tab. So now you see you just open up in a new tab right there. So now let's go back and edit with Elementor. So just click here. I already have mine open, so I'm just gonna go back here. Now you can change this to your blog. You can change this to literally any page you want to. And this is like the custom, basically whenever someone clicks into it, they'll go into it. I just put blog just because I already have About Us taken up. And ideally, this is how you can add and input your own custom pages. Now, if you want to add your own custom blog, I can make an entire course for that because blogs have a completely different setup as far as website design that isn't necessarily the same as the way I did for this tutorial. So if you do want to see that, comment down below and let me know. But for now, we're just going to keep it there. And um, I'm actually going to go ahead and just keep everything and go back to the actual dashboard. So I'm going to update this, but... I'm basically gonna delete this blog menu so that we don't have to have this anymore. Cause I'm just showing that in just for an example. And let's have, actually, instead of deleting it, let's uh, let's rename it. Yeah, so I'll keep it here and let's just rename this. Um, instead of saying blog, let's see what I put. I put contact us. Yeah, let me just say um, new features here. For this part, I'm just messing around with customization wise, so you don't have to copy exactly here. But let's just put um, let's just put new, update this, and then I'm gonna go to appearance menu, and let's drag this to the back. That way, when I showcase the actual site, it makes more sense because um, I'll show you in just a second. So pretty much, if I go home. And instead of just saying, all right, that's what we typically have, you can click into the actual page. And then boom, you have these new features here. And then we can go back home again and change it out. So I didn't switch it for the footer here, but ideally you could do the same thing there. And then this is pretty much the setup for now. So one thing I want to show you is how to actually make your website responsive. So let's go ahead and click on Edit with Elementor. Before I do do that, uh, I've noticed that I had a typo up here. So pretty much it's not what our client's saying. I initially I thought it was like what our client's saying about us, but instead I typed too fast. So what our clients say. I technically could just put like client testimonials, but um, I think that's fine here. Let me just copy this. Looks good. You can just say what our clients say about us. Yeah, what our clients say about us. I like that, it looks a lot better. And let's go ahead and click on update. All right, so just a little tap one and fix, but now let's go into the actual responsiveness. So now let's see how it looks on different screens. So if you wanna check and see how it looks on a tablet and mobile device, just go down to the bottom left corner down here, click on responsive mode and just switch to the tablet. Now, depending on your photo sizes and things that you use, sometimes it might not look the exact same as desktop. So ideally you'd want to resize this, but since I just downloaded this from a website, it has the current default size, so it's quite big, so it drags down. So in that case, the ways we could improvise is literally just um, clicking on the text and we could center it here. And then same with, um, the options there but again if you wanted to keep like the desktop then obviously you'd have to basically resize it and then if you go back to desktop you'll notice it still looks the same so it's independent certain settings will change it though however doing this like this you should be good and still the same concept except people are scrolling on their iPad or tablet here you can change the um, like sizing and whatnot but uh for this specific one since the text it's already pre-defaulted 
it look kind of weird if you wanted to change this so you could technically take out some words but for this sake i'm uh, pretty fine with that nothing too crazy services looks pretty good because of the way it was set up sometimes you can add a little padding for instance like for here because it doesn't um see how these words go on to the next line good thing if i were to change this word here let me show you and just put like marketing we can check the desktop version and notice that it did update so ideally if your customers or your main person is using the desktop then you can like keep it but you can change the padding and whatnot here and like additional stuff as far as the spacing if you want it to actually look perfectly even so if you let's try like the bottom like 20 and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but for the most part, this is something you have to play around with in terms of your copy and see what fits yours the best. And then clients, what it says here, for this text, we can make this smaller. So um, topography, boom, now it fits on one line there. And then by the company, same thing, you can make that smaller. But so far, it looks pretty decent to me. Nothing too out of the blue, that thing I would have changed. And then for this on mobile, sometimes what happens is a picture something might be too big so like if i go to mobile and then um let me just change the size smaller like this and then pretty much you can shrink that too but i like this setting you could literally remove this pic and if i click it let me show you go to advanced responsiveness and just go hide on mobile so pretty much what happens is anyone who were to log into their phone and go on this website, this photo would disappear. So sometimes if you have something really big, like, like for instance, this part right here does not work out on mobile. So ideally I would click this and hide it with this section. Cause it just, there's certain things. If you notice some websites, they don't have the same exact thing as desktop. So if you were to hide this, it just looks way cleaner and it just doesn't look as bad. And you're still good. If you go back to desktop, you know, it's still there. So don't worry about that part. And it's just to make it easier for people to understand. And then here the um, the services look fine. Or clients say you can change the font size there if you'd like by the company. But since we were using most of the Elementor blocks and templates, they're already pre-set to pretty much be responsive, give or take, you know, a few spaces. But if you were doing this from scratch, just note that it can be incredibly painful to go in and try to make it perfect. So I would say is try to figure out what your website wants to do and try to keep it within the template blocks and then you should be set to go. And that's pretty much how to do it. And then just go click on update and then you go back to desktop and then you're pretty much back to where you're at. So this pretty much is what we ended up creating for today. So if you did want to see more tutorials, more design web creation videos, then go down below and hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Share this with your friends, your group chats, or anyone that could see value in this video. And aside from that, I will see you in the next video.